Okay, in this video, we're going to be talking about the radius and the ulna. You are looking at the anterior view in anatomic position. You have the lateral side, medial. You have distal and proximal. So this is the radius right here. It's going to be the lateral bone in anatomical position. So I'll start with the proximal. We have the proximal radius. You have the head right here. And then you have the neck. This part is the radial tuberosity. On the medial side of the radius, you have the interosseous border of the radius. At the distal end of the radius, you have the styloid process here. And then you have the ulnar notch, which is where the ulna articulates with the radius. With the head, sorry, yeah, the, the head of the ulna articulates with the distal end of the radius here. Next, I will talk a little bit about the ulna. So starting distally, we have the styloid process of the ulna. This is the head of the ulna. And we have the interosseous border of the ulna. Now, between the interosseous border of the radius and the interosseous border of the ulna, you have the interosseous membrane. This is a syndesmosis. Next, we have the proximal part of the ulna. So we have the olecranon process, which is this projection of bone that goes into the olecranon fossa of the humerus. You're looking at this from a posterior angle. If I flip this back anterior, we have the coronoid process of the ulna, which goes into the coronoid fossa of the humerus. Now just a quick reminder, if anybody's getting confused about coronoid versus coracoid, if the bone has a N in its name, it is coronoid. That will be the feature. So you have the coronoid process of the ulna here. And a couple more things. You have the trochlear notch, and that is the notch right here. And then last, you have the radial notch, which is where the head of the radius articulates with the ulna.